Hey guys, how are you today? All right, so my friend Donna Mulholland, and if you don't know who she is, I'm going to try to include a link to her website or blog or whatever in the description below. You can look her up on the internet too. She's a really great artist. Anyway, she's been posting for weeks now um, tote bags and pencil cases and things that she's been painting. I think she's got an open studio coming up or a, 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 a show, a, say, a gallery show and sale or something coming up. Anyway, she's been making tons of these things. And I have to say to her, oh my god, Donna, they're beautiful. And um, I might have to email you because I might need to own one. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, I thought I'd, I'd give it a shot and do some in my own unique style because it's such a good idea. So when I was at Dollar Tree today, looking for something else, mind you, I found these small tablet cases yes at Dollar Tree these are neoprene now they're not super thick any any time you buy a sleeve like this it is not intended to prevent your device from impact they're to keep it clean to keep it from getting scratched if you want something that's really going to prevent it from getting broken in a in a you know hard impact you really need to get like an otter box or something a lot harder than a, you know a neoprene sleeve it's just not going to be thick enough now how matter no matter how much padding that they put in there um, and if you don't believe me <laughs> I'm going to include um, a channel link to another YouTube channel called Gizmo Slip and they do a lot of uh, videos where they drop smartphones and tablets from a hundred feet in all kinds of crazy um, <coughs> coverings and cases and including OtterBox and all kinds of stuff. So you can go watch some of their videos. Some of them are hilarious. Anyway, so I found these cute little sleeves, which would be, be great if you have like, these little ones are great for like a Kindle or an iPad mini. Um, you just want to slip it in there and then put it in your backpack or your purse um, to keep it clean because uh, you want to take it with you. And it has a little bit of padding to it. It's not a lot. It's from the Dollar Tree, but it, you know. You could also, if you're an art journaler, hello, these would be great for a small art journal and a few pens uh, to put in your bag, you know, to keep the journal from getting scratched up and, and the edges, you know, dinged up. They had this little one and then they had these big ones. So I got some of each. Now, you hear that? That's because I took them out of their plastic packaging. I put the pla packaging inside the pocket and then I resealed it so that when we're working on the back side, anything we do to the back side, if it leaks through, it doesn't go through to the front side. Then I took some painter's tape and I taped off a rectangle on the back of all of these. Now we're going to take some deco art gesso. This is white. You could use black. I want to use white. And I'm going to put it here, a, bun a big blob of it here on my mixing plate. Their gesso is really nice and thick and very smooth. It has a gesso booger in it. Hold on. I can see it. I'm trying not to get my finger in there, you know. I can see it. There it is. Let's get rid of the booger. All right. So we're going to take a nice, generous blob of <coughs> the white gesso. And I'm going to add some fabric medium to it. Now, I don't know that this step is strictly necessary. And I don't ever plan on whoever has these myself or if I give them away them ever being washed but it is a stretchy knit fabric neoprene and I don't know if I give them away what they're gonna do with them so uh, I want the base coat at least the gesso to be something that has the fabric medium in it and then I know it's gonna really stick now I've added fabric medium to paint plenty of times gesso is basically paint um, Granted, it's a really thick white base paint, but um, I've never actually added it to gesso. I must, I think it'll work just fine, but I guess we'll find out, right? <laughs> it's an experiment. Monday with deco art slash experiments. <laughs> okay, so we've got that well mixed. I'm not going to go too far with the palette knife in case I need it, so I'm just going to stick it in the water. And I've got a nice, fat, wide, flat brush here. This is a some kind of Chinese painting brush. I don't know. I bought it at the art supply store. So we're going to take each one of these and we're going to prep them with a coat of gesso. And I'm going to, like if you were doing, if you were doing like a, a painting on a wall and you had 
<clears throat> lots of painters tape on the wall and you wanted when you lift it up to have a nice clean line then what you do is you start with not too much paint on your brush for one thing and you start actually on the tape and pull down all the way around You can see what I mean about um, if you peek right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. You can peek under the tape. I don't know if you can see that, but the tape is lifting a little bit, but it's a nice clean line. So then you want to just let that dry. And, you know, hopefully I'm not like narfing up the back side of the. <laughs> the back side of the case. So I'm going to do that to all of these and then we're going to come back with some colors. Now for the next layer of course you can use another another booger. You can use of course fabric paint. You can continue with fabric paint um, but once you have the gesso on here and the gesso is dry you can also um, use regular paint especially if you're doing this for yourself and you you know like I said you don't ever intend on washing it then I would just use regular paint if you don't know if it's going to ever be washed um, or you're doing them for sale, I would probably recommend to you that you use fabric paint. And some of these colors are probably going to take more gesso than others to cover up the color of the fabric which is something I do I do want to have as white of a base as possible. There's another gesso booger. My, I think my gesso has been sitting a little long. Probably a little too long. Okay, so do that to all of them that you want to do and then let it dry and we'll be back. Okay, hey guys, so we have our little tablet covers and the gesso we put on there is dry. Um, and so now we're going to add color because we put the white gesso on there and um, essentially erased the color of the fabric, not completely in most of the cases, but at least in part. Um, we can put some color on there. It's going to really be brighter and pop. I do have two brushes here. I have the Deco Art one inch angle brush, um, Americana Deco Art. Um, I also have a Filbert. I do, I am really attracted to using this brush today, so I think that we're going to do that. I have, this is the tealy colored one, so I have a few different colors of Deco Art paint here. I'm going to start with this yellow. This is cadmium yellow. I'm going to put it right, I'm not going to even put it on a palette. I'm going to put it right on the fabric cover. And you notice I have yellows and greens and blues. These will all blend nicely together without creating any mud. So I'm going to put a little bit of a couple of colors on there and I'm going to put some white, just a little bit. I think we'll add a blue. Some of these aren't even open yet. Let's just add it this way. It might be easier. I don't like taking the plastic off. It's a pain in the neck. All right. So I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to keep it very loose and abstract. I'm going to make some marks with the paint. I'm going to let it blend on here and create secondary colors. Um, I'm not looking to create anything that, you know, is exact or pre precise or precious. Um, I'm just creating something that's fun and colorful and abstract. Who doesn't love that? I do want to make sure I cover up all the gesso. Okay, I like that. So now I'm going to take one of these. I have a couple other colors of blue. Let's take another one of these. And this time I am going to put it on the plate. 
And this isn't dry, of course, but that's okay. I think it'll still be okay. And each one of these I'll probably do a little di bit differently, and then we have to let it dry again, and then we're not done. This is actually the plastic um, sanitary lid off of a deodorant, and it's this perfect oval shape. So I thought it might be fun to make some marks with that. Yep. Oh, that is certainly a lot of fun. And we have this lighter blue, and this is a piece of a silicone pot holder. Now, my friend Donna Mulholland, she just did the painty, crazy, um, you know, background. She didn't do all this, like, stamping and stuff. Um, either way you choose to do it is going to be fine. Um, I do think that I want to add carefully, because if I don't do it carefully, it's going to turn into mud. I want to add a little bit of pink, just a little bit. If I don't do it carefully, though, it's going to be, like, brown instead of pink. So I think we're going to get out some sort of a dauber tool or something to make a dot with. This is just a stippling brush by Royal. And I'm literally like, I'm not going to move the paint around too much because it'll just not be good. Okay, so then once you have something that you think you kind of like, go ahead and you don't necessarily have to wait for the paint to dry to pull the tape off. Just do it carefully. There we go. Now we didn't get a perfect rectangle, but that's okay. It did get, the paint did get under a little bit in a couple spots, but that's okay. I'm going to do the other ones and we're going to let them all dry and I'll be right back. Okay, so they're not completely dry, but they're dry enough. They're dry to the touch, barely. <laughs> um, so we're going to continue, and then I let need to, then you need to let them dry for I think 24 to 48 hours. I'm sorry, 48 to 72 hours, and then if you want to, you can wash it, and that um, and the, after 72 hours, the paint is cured. We're not going to wash them, but this way, at least I know. Um, you know, with stretching and wear and tear, the paint's not going to go anywhere. So I've got some black um, Deco Art So Soft Fabric paint. I've got a stencil. Now, this is one of my stencils that I cut. It's an arrow stencil. The design for it is available as a digital download in my Etsy shop. The link's in the description below. If you have a stencil cutting system that allows you to import images, then you can cut one of these yourself. If you don't have that, you of course can still buy the digital download and then cut it by hand. I have a silhouette, so I can do those things. I put large arrows and small arrows on here. And I think we're going to, I wanna, I wanna, yeah, I wanna put some arrows on here. So we're going to stencil some arrows on here. Hopefully we're gonna do a decent job. <laughs> I'm gonna sit down. And um, we're going to use a stippling brush and just a little bit of paint. I'm going to hold the stencil down with one hand, and I'm just going to go up and down, up and down, up and down.
try not to move it around too much. You could tape, of course, tape it down um, if you're worried uh, about it, um, or use maybe binder clips. You could skip this step. I mean, you know, you could doodle. Uh, once the fabric paint is dry, you could get a Sharpie or a fabric paint pen, and you could doodle on here. Maybe put some inspirational words. That would be cool. So I like that a lot. I am going to take a baby wipe and maybe the little smudge I see will come off. Maybe. Of black paint right there. Yeah, it's going to come off. That one won't come off, but that's okay. So I really like that. I think that's super cute. So let's do the other ones. There is a little like white. Sm I wasn't real neat about this because <laughs> you know why would I be neat about anything? There's some like white paint or gesso up here, probably from my fingers. Would be my guess. Um, But it's okay. It's you can barely see it. I don't even know if you guys can see it. I can see it. Um, but anyway, it's super cute. Okay, let's do. Here's the other purple one. This is the bigger one. And and you could do any use any stencil. I really like these arrows. There's something about the arrows. I don't know what it is. see. I kind of want to do them this way, the bigger ones, and I might want to do all of them. That's going to take a lot of paint. So the paint is going on here a lot differently on the raw fabric than it is over the other fabric paint that we've got on here. So um, you want to just, you know, kind of keep that in mind. Well, that was totally sloppy. And if you get some paint where you don't want it, if it's on the fabric, it's probably not coming off. If it's on the fabric paint, and the fabric paint's dry enough, well, you can just wipe that right off and clean up your image. Shall we keep going? Here's the little, little one, the little teal one. Let's see. Now, I don't need these, at least I don't need all of them, so I will probably be gifting some of them in racks in the future. Um, if you're interested in receiving racks from me or someone else, um, go and join my Facebook group. We have a list under files for racks and sign up there. And maybe while you're there, look up a name, maybe somebody you've never heard of or, and don't know and send them a little something. RAC stands for a random act of kindness for those that don't know. That one's a little smudgy too, but I like it. I don't care. All right. Now on these, these are already black. So I don't know if I want to put black paint on them, on the arrows. I might want to do a different color, like maybe on this one. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe blue. I don't know. Maybe blue. Let's just do blue. We're going to just put it right on. If it mixes with the black a little bit, it's going to be fine. I'm not going to worry about it.
it made like a blue gray which is pretty you don't want to do straight black on this it's not going to show well that's very messy but you get the idea let's see oops So see, this is what I mean. Because we prepped it with gesso and because um, the color that we put on there is dry to the touch, as long as I don't press too hard, I can get this up. There we go. And so what we're going to do is we're going to dry, we're going to wipe off the back. I think the back side of this stencil got dirty. I got a little too sloppy, a little few too many times. All right. So we'll line it up again with the one that's on here. Not that we really need to do that. It doesn't really matter. Okay, some more blue. Maybe not be a gorilla with a brush here. Yeah, that's better. That I like a lot. All right, we have one more. wanting to do an arrow this way so I think we're going to again on these big ones I like to I don't know there's something about putting it that way so once you get all your stenciling done let it dry according to your paints directions like I said for the deco art so soft pat fabric paint you want to let it um, dry for 48 to 72 hours so if you're doing these for a craft show or you're giving them as a gift you want to plan to do these well in advance come up come up come up that one wasn't all the way dry okay it's okay um, so that they have time to cure I'm not the best stenciler on the planet, but I love these. They're cool. All right, so that's it. I'm going to let these dry for um, a few days, and then I will um, have them ready to rack. I hope this gave you some ideas of what you can do um, with things found from the dollar store. These would be a cute little gift um, for anybody who has a tablet or a Kindle. They would be a cute craft fair item. Um, I think I'm going to rack these. I think I'm going to fill them up with like maybe little journals and things and some postcards with my artwork and send them off. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget the most important thing. Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, it is late in the evening and I was working on some other stuff and I just can't help myself but doodle on here. I just, I just can't. See, so I just have a Posca pet paint pen and a Sharpie paint pen. And you know, I'm not getting perfect lines or marks, but if you've been watching my YouTube channel for a while, then you know that I'm not really about perfect lines and marks. I just think that there's not enough that you can do to this to just make this look fun and dress it up. There really isn't. Now, if you want your lines to um, all look the same way, then you might want to keep them on the paint, painted part. They look different on the fabric than the paint. Um, I am okay with either one. 
And my favorite gold paint pen, by the way, is a Sharpie. Um, I think it's the best one out there. And it's inexpensive. So I'm just using the white one on the arrows. And you'll see right here on this arrow, because half of it's um, on the fabric and half of it's on the painted part, and the Sharpie is going to react differently. Nobody's home yet. They're all... They're all. I shouldn't say they're all. The daughter moved out, so it's just the husband and I, and he's out at a football game with his buddies, which is cool, because that means I get to catch up on all the projects this week that I didn't get done yet art wise so I just love I love the way that looks it's just so much fun I don't really think you can go wrong with this the more you know marks and things you put on there I think the better it's gonna look so you know if you're gonna do a project like this whether you're just doing a one tote bag maybe you're doing a pencil bag for back to school maybe you found some of these tablet covers at Dollar Tree then just have fun with it, decorate it, um, use what you have, and if you are going to buy stuff, you don't have to spend a ton of money. Deco Art products work really well, and they're very affordable. Um, they do have some glass paint pens, um, but I don't know if they have fabric paint pens. And I had these, so these regular acrylic paint pens. So I'm going to use them. Uh, of course, if there's a deco art product out there, I'm sure it works fabulously. Um, but these paint pens write really nicely over the deco art fabric paints. Uh, the nice thing about the deco art fabric paints is when they dry, they're not crunchy. Um, some fabric paints dry, stiff, and kind of they feel kind of crunchy on your clothing. These don't. They wash really well. My Galaxy pants are holding up really well. If you haven't seen that video yet, um, go look it up. It should be under a mon mon the Monday with Deco Art playlist. And there you go. I love that. You could even write a word here if you wanted. All right, that's it for today, everybody, for reels this time. Have a nice day, and I will see you later. Bye.